Today on Otis at Home, we're going to be doing pouchoir. So that is the French word for stencil. Um, but this is also sort of a technique that is used for printmaking and artist books and illustrations. Um, this is a simplified version of it, but I wanted to do something with a political message because during this movement right now, a lot of people have been contacting their city council members and different politicians to sort of advocate for the changes that they would like to see. And I thought it might be nice to have a craft project you could do that is also a way to make multiples and spread messages during this time. This is a technique um, that I learned from Rebecca Chamley at Otis, who teaches our book arts classes. Um, and again, this is a simplified version of it, but you can do whatever you want with it. So what you need is your piece of paper or cardstock, which you're going to use um, to make the stencil. You need some ink pads. You could also use uh, paint for this. You'll need a knife, an X-Acto knife or something like this, and some brushes. You could use a sponge brush if you have or a stencil brush like this works really well and probably some tape too. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is cut out our stencil. You can see I've drawn mine with thick black lines so I can see it. Um, and I did it with pencil first. So I went with pencil and then I drew over with marker and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out. So you can see that I cut this out um, and all the little spaces here, of course, fell out. You can't um, do that unless you make a space for it in the stencil. Um, but yeah, now I'm going to take some washi tape and tape it down to the piece of paper that I want to stencil it onto. Washi tape is good because it'll come off without damaging the paper. However, if you don't have washi tape, you could use blue painter's tape or whatever you have access to. So now that's taped down, I'm gonna choose some colors and I wanna do a few different colors here. You might have a piece of paper off to the side where you can test your colors first. So you just want to dab the brush into that um, ink pad. This is just what you use for stamps, right? And you can test it. So that one's a little dry. It's not coming off too good. Let's see if I try a different brush. Maybe it'll work better. Oh yeah, so it works better with this. Um, something we could do too is try to directly um, push the ink pad down. We could see how that works. So sort of working, yeah, that might be a good option. Might be a little faster than using the brush, but you could also use the brush. So I'm gonna do sort of a gradient here and try to use some orange, let's see. There we go, so this one is a little less dry, so it'll work better with the brush. So you're just dabbing like that. Dab, dab, dab. So I'm really just pushing down. This is the, if you're using a stencil brush, how you would use it. So now let's peel off our stencil and see how we did. So yeah, I like the way that this looks. You see you get sort of an airbrush texture happening with that when you use the um, ink pads. And since you have the stencil, you can make an addition and make like multiple of these. This is also a technique you could do with stencils that are pre-made that you can buy at a craft supply store. Um, so if you wanna do maybe like a texture in the background, that might be nice. I'm gonna experiment with that here. So I'm trying it out using a sponge brush that's shaped like this now. And I'm really pushing into the ink pad and then sort of brushing and pushing down at the same time on my stencil. And this is working pretty well, as you can see. Oh yeah, much better. So there's using a store-bought stencil and the sponge brush shaped like this and the ink pad. Now I'm gonna go on top with the stencil I made, but this time I'm gonna um, try to use some paint instead of um, the ink pad to show you how that works. Okay, so I didn't have black paint. I'm actually gonna try a little bit of black block printing ink, but I think paint might work as well. Um, it depends on how your uh, stencil is. 
Um, but the key is that you just want to go light on it. And I would test it out on a piece of paper again before you do it. So let's see, maybe if I had a brush like this, ink is a lot stickier than paint, but it should do the trick. Or if I were to do this, I would just make sure that I got a light amount. Okay. Um, and see how it works with this brush. It's a little more spread out like that. So I'm going to try this brush and see because it's more spread out. So I'm getting more of the texture of the brush that way, but I'll just keep going. And that looks pretty good. So you could do this with block printing ink. You could do this with acrylic paint, I think. Um, but you just experiment. You might be able to do it, I think, also with screen printing ink. But try to use whatever you have on hand. If you don't have any of that on hand, you could also use the stencil just with um, markers. You could try that out. This looks like it's going to work. So I'm going to do the whole stencil this way and then check it out. Yeah, that came out pretty good. Actually, I think that the block printing ink works well. But again, just use what you have on hand and you can make multiples of these. It could be a political message. It could be um, just an image, whatever you want to do with it. But um, a lot of people right now are sending mail um, to advocate within their communities. So it's something you might consider.